Hello, Face Warriors. Let's have a great week. How's everyone today? Let me coach you before the week starts. Hello, Michael. Zig. If you hear this in your head before you click your mouse, I hope this one works. Okay, you have to stop trading for a little while until you can come back and go, Mr. Market, I've done my work. Prove me wrong. So we don't want the markets to be challenging. We want to challenge the markets. Everyone with me? That's how warriors are. If you have a question mark in your head every time you click your mouse, you either don't have enough conviction with your work, right? Okay. All right, I want to start it off with a look from Amanda Sweeney. Everyone knows Amanda in our room. She's an excellent technician besides the scalper day trader. She has some macro views, okay? For her, 60 minutes, I believe, is pretty macro. Showing this uh, falling wedge. Have some nice divergence here in your Aussie. If you don't know Amanda, you need to join our community. Become a subscriber and hang out with her and all the other pros that trade in the room to buy groceries, pay their mortgage, support their families, build a future. It's not a hobby for these guys in there. Surround yourself with traders better than you. So even if you're a beginner and it, it would feel overwhelming at first, you rise to the level of, I don't want to say competition, but people that you're spending time with, okay? So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I think it was, uh, what's his name? Famous public speaker, Tony Robbins, said you, you find someone to model yourself after. Of course, you're not going to be a clone, but uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel either. Uh, all the things that I do in the market uh, are not inventions. There are things I've learned and picked up from people that I acknowledge over the years and passing it on and paying it forward. Okay, so let's get to the markets here. I have, uh, you know, some weeks there's not much to say. I think there's plenty to say here. Uh, it's my view, and I was talking about it last week, and the dollar, I was looking for a high between 93.70 and 94. So far, the high is 406. I'll clean it up a little bit. We have a decent divergence on the one hour. It's just due, okay, guys? I'm not saying this is going to be a dollar crash. In fact, um, here's my macro view. Okay, so I want to talk to Greg this week because I remember a long time ago he had a wave five going up to 107. Um, to me, it looks like we have a breakout, and it's a falling wedge or a triangle. I, I, I'd call it more like a falling wedge. And that was a breakout close. So, you know, initially for the dollar, all I'd be looking for is a pullback to the breakout. Starts closing back underneath the confluence of these moving averages. That might be a different story, but that would be under 93. And you can't rule out, you know, maybe another retest into Tuesday. Euro stronger than pound, right? In fact, uh, one of my eagles on Saturday said 117.20. So the student teaches the teacher. And uh, let's see here. So it looks pretty good. You're getting a nice little reversal day. I'm not looking for a home run ball. But, you know, maybe 118, 50. And then, you know, back to the breakdown, I'd be surprised to get a close back over 120. Everyone with me? Now, uh, the Aussie was a strength last week. Uh, we talked about it. You know, maybe we're getting the right shoulder here. So if the dollar's gonna weaken, I don't know why the Aussie would begin to weaken as well since it's not making new lows like the Euro and the pound. In fact, we're putting in our second higher low. Give me why if you see it, you don't have to agree with me. Okay, um, S&Ps, I'm looking for 
uh, this recovery high that we started to come out off of late last week to be taken out, confirmed high here, maybe 2750-ish or so. We'll see what happens. And then I just want to address one more thing. And uh, this is something that uh, Blake was talking about and we talked about on Friday and I saw it uh, mentioned in the week ahead, uh, the email that I get every week, you guys should get an email every Sunday, kind of update you, it gives you links to uh, Blake's video, a look at the week ahead. But we had a pretty nice uh, one, two, three here on the hourly. So uh, with risk being on and the S&Ps maybe having another 24 handles or so, I would expect a bounce in yield maybe back to 309, 310. And you can almost imagine it being a right shoulder up here. I'm not saying it's the end of the bear market in bonds, just like I'm saying it's not the end of the, may not be the end of the bull market in the dollar. But that's a pretty good measured move. That would take you back to the 3% level. Three. I can only imagine, um, uh, I don't think it came out of the wedge yet. I'll, I want to see Blake's chart. But I would imagine that the bonds start yields after this risk on move might be signaling that the S&Ps are running out of time, at least for this wave. And maybe there's another, you know, just enough to clear out the uh, top pickers from last week, take them out. Right, there's your one hour confirmed high. So we'll see, almost looks like a cup and handle. So I'm thinking that the 10 year has peaked. Short term, I don't know if uh, there's still record short positions in the bonds. I know you can't find a bond bull anywhere. So maybe time for a shakeout in, uh, and a rally in the treasury market. So I'd use this bounce in 10 year yields to buy bonds, um, uh, 30 year proxy, 20 year TLT, bond futures, because the long end put a, in an even deeper decline here and they're not gonna rally as much. So really um, the yield curve could invert again. So uh, after that pop, I think we're getting close, not quite there yet in the end. I would key in shorts off of new highs in the S&Ps. Could be here, but uh, there's better looking opportunities than to top pick it here. So maybe Citicorp is gonna get their target. I think they were talking 1220 in the end. And finally, uh, with that being said, silver is still outperforming gold. It's down 0.2% while gold's down 0.6%. So gold trying to hang on by the skin of its nails here to this wedge line. I believe uh, Blake had a longer term trend line at 1240. And I'll tell you what guys, I look at this and I don't, I don't know, why can't we see 1200 or 1160 again? You know, what if we're setting up for one of these from here? There won't be one gold bull left this fall if we end up down here. So those are my calls. The next one's yours, 800-899-BEAR. Oh, I'm sorry, that was my old toll-free number. So I'm gonna pass it over to Blake and uh, see uh, what he's thinking in the bonds here this morning and currencies. Thank you everyone for being here. If you're not happy with your FX broker, contact our sponsor at Forest Park FX and speak to Trent. Uh, I've sent a few people to Trent and he's uh, really helped them out and given them uh, good ideas on what would be the best fit for them for a broker. Okay, uh, the Ustream has no sound. Okay, Eric, are, are you in here though? All right, I'll let Velu know. Have you recovered from Roman's birthday party, Blake? <laughs> uh, which one? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a weekend here. You know, you know, actually, we ended up having, you know, I, I don't know, about 20, 20 family members over at the house last night. It was, uh, 
it was uh it was good women and you know because it's it's you know summer is already in full swing here um but uh but as far as um this the the tough part was actually the the uh birthday party that that uh we we had for his friends which was actually on um friday no saturday and uh, with a bunch of kids at this jump place, and then we took them all to pizza, and it was it was 19 kids, 19, wow. and not including you know some parents that tagged along too. Um, that was the most expensive pizza bill I've ever had in my life. Uh, <laughs> so, but it, but that that was that was actually the the tire tiring part. Not so much having family over. Excuse me, yesterday it wasn't so bad. Um, but uh, but anyway, um, but it, everything's good. Um, and, and, and oh, we're right there. I'm sorry. Uh, we're right there at the wedge line. Uh, no, well, this is the Euro. So, oh, yeah, oh the, that looks okay. Yeah, that looks okay too. Yeah, actually you were showing the same chart as Amanda had and, and I have the exact same chart that, you know, that's one of the, um, uh, keys to having people like Amanda, for example, uh, her and I view charts very similar. So uh, from a b basic technical standpoint, so when she's looking at the exact same thing I am and, uh, you know, and obviously our Forex Analytics subscribers are getting the same uh, charts because, you, you, you know, it's either from me or Amanda, for example, or, or Steve or, you know, or Grega or whatever. Um, especially when we're doing basic technical analysis it's it it's hard to decipher if you're looking at amanda's charts or my charts or steve's charts or stelios's charts because we we see the charts very similar but it's um but it, but that view is is really important because it it gives us the opportunity to to make sure that we're we're seeing the same thing and then it, it's it's extra confirmation for us but uh in the euro for example uh we do have you know a bit of a descending wedge but what's more important about the euros where, where we're at and and we're at a 38 percent retracement of this is the 103.50 low to the high we're at the 38 percent retracement and the big breakout yeah, point from 2015. i noticed that yeah i noticed yeah. that when i did it finally did my pibs on the weekly to figure out where we were at and it went right to the pip there yeah yeah so um we we did, and so it's it's a really um, really key support. I got I got filled on some bids overnight uh, down at thirty because I I put in a bid when before I went to bed, and I got filled on all this. So I'm I'm actually long, but there's there's about a billion dollars worth of options. Uh, the expiry I believe is at one seventeen fifty, but uh, I have also heard it's at one seventeen sixty. I got to go uh, confirm that. But anyway, it's around here. So um, that means you know, here for the next couple hours, we're probably going to be stuck around here. Uh, but what I'm, what I'm really looking for is if we break above 117.75, that's going to be a real trigger for me that, that, um, that we are, we are indeed probably going to make our way back up towards the, you know, 118, 119, maybe even 120 levels uh, in the coming days. I, you know, I am expecting for us to move back up towards the 200 day moving average, um, you know, from, from here. Do I think the euro downtrend is over now? No, um, maybe near term, maybe for the week, next week or two. But uh, let's talk a little bit about this this China U.S. trade deal that is happening. Okay, or that that is you know uh, taking place right now. The agreements, whatever the terms end up agreeing, the the. The bottom line is it's going to be a tailwind for the U.S. economy. Um, you know, we are uh, we are what nine years into this you know, growth cycle. Um, so this, you know, if we, if we end up not going to uh, to have a trade war with China, and they end up buying more goods, um, the dollar should increase in value, inflation should continue to increase, and we should continue to run a little hot with our economy. So overall, I believe this is going to be a very positive development for the dollar. But but what the the issue might be maybe in the very near term, like right now, is the buy the rumor, sell the news, and you might see a little bit of a, you know, a, 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 a pullback in the dollar just because of you know the extended nature of where the dollar is at and you know how far we've we've gone. So um, 
you know, as far as, as far as, uh, uh, you know, looking at the euro dollar, do I think we can still extend down to 114, maybe even lower? Sure. But I, I believe that right now we're going to be bouncing at least near term. And so that's, so for me, I'm playing it on the long side counter trend and um, I'm really not really too convinced about it until we start trading above 117.75, 118. And then I'll, you know, I'll start to be a little bit more lax with my, my current positioning in the Euro. Um, but I think that's what we're, what we're dealing with right now. You, and, and you can see the, the, the rally that is, uh, that has come out of the U S dollar Japanese yen. I mean, the U S dollar Japanese yen blasted higher despite yields are, are still stalling a little bit. And, and, and here's the thing about dollar yen. I'm not really convinced that the dollar, I mean, I know the dollar yen is higher today, but I'm not really too convinced about it, especially with the reversal signals that we saw in the bond market on, uh, you know, on Friday, and if you look at you look at yields right now, um, yes, they're higher. I mean, we we closed at 305. Uh, I don't know, 305, 80, something, or you know, like, or you know, we went as low as 305, something, 80, 70, somewhere like that. And, and and yields are a little stronger, bonds are a little weaker, but really, I expected bonds to be much weaker, and I'm ex I imagine yields to be much stronger. So what happens if yields really start to pull back here? Um, you know, what, is that, what does that do for the positioning of the dollar that you have everybody that's, that's long the dollar right now? Um, that, that is, I be believe, a risk. And so I, I, I look back at this 10-year uh, this um, bond market you know, formation that we've been looking at, and I'm still looking at it saying, hey, you know, I'm not, I'm not sold yet. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sold yet on the idea that, that the bond market is continuing lower. I, I, I mean, as long as we stay below this 119 in the tenure, then I guess we are. But, um, you know, if we get back above 119, that's when things get a little like iffy for dollar longs, right? And that's when that's when anybody who's long the dollar is going to start really questioning. You know, maybe it's gone too far too fast, and maybe there's going to be a little bit of a pullback. So, um, um, that that's what I'm you know kind of that that's actually what I'm paying attention to now. A couple other things that are are pretty key developments at least right now is the pound. The pound has broken through its 38% retracement at 134.40. Now the thing about the cable is the cable has failed to show any type of ability to rally. And that has been, um, you know, a, a big problem with the cable for the last two weeks. And, and it finally succumbed to this dollar strength that we saw, you know, when the Euro came down. But if the Euro, you know, uh, again, uh, continues to hold up here, then that might uh, allow for the pound to bounce as well. I, I think the pound, you got to, you got to pay attention to it just in case the if if the euro it, let's let's just take a step back for a moment if the euro does post a, a recovery rally or a counter trend um, counter trend dollar pullback okay if the euro starts to witness that and the euro starts to you know break back above 118 then the risk here is in the cable is that we had a flush out of these longs and then we get a reversal. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be paying really close attention to the, to the, if the Euro dollar bounces, what the cable does, because I think if the cable gets above, you know, 134.50 right here, um, then that is going to squeeze anybody who got short, uh, late in this move. I mean, cause this, you can see right here, this is a little bearish wedge, right? Broke down, but you know, how about if we end up? Uh, how about if we end up, you know, reversing? You know, I, I'm not saying that's guaranteed to happen. I think you just got to watch the euro. If the euro starts to, you know, euro starts to bounce, then 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 the the cable is at risk of uh, of bouncing as well. Um, dollar yen continues to be strong. Swissy, uh, I mean, this is, you know, the Swissy is just incredible how well the the Swissy is held up here. Uh, as well, um, you know, and uh, you take the Aussie and the Kiwi. I think that the Aussie is going to end up outperforming um, these these uh, these currencies here, you know, because if 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 China is not 
um, if we're not entering into a trade war or it's quote unquote on hold as you know President Trump or Treasury Secretary Mnuchin has said, um, you know, maybe the Aussie will outperform. So the Aussie dollar, I think we got to keep a real close eye on it. And I'm not long, but we have to keep a real close eye on it. And if it starts to break higher above like 7550, because then, you know, you're in the, the this is you have to look at it from, um, you know, from the dollar perspective. If the dollar starts to sell off, the euro bounces, the Aussie is probably going to squeeze higher. I don't see why the Aussie can't go higher. And if, if you're like, well, I don't want to play, I don't want to play the, the dollar per se. I don't want to buy the Aussie dollar. Well, maybe that you, you, you play a better trade might, might even be the euro Aussie short. Or, or if you're thinking about NAFTA and you're like, well, they're not going to get a NAFTA deal done. This Aussie Canadian could really be a, a nice, you know, long candidate. Um, this could be a trade that you could say I'm buying Aussie dollars, selling Canadian dollars. You know, a break above 97.07, and you know we're we're probably going to get a hell of a squeeze here in the Aussie Canadian. So you know, those are you know just some different ideas to think about in this this environment. It's that. It, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I need to put on my RSI again. Um, uh, let me get, uh, it's been a while since I've done this, so I'm just going to put it back on there. There we go. All right. So anyway, um, just, just some, you know, just some food for thought with, uh, with the Aussie. I think the Aussie could be a real, you know, um, nice pickup, uh, whether you're talking about the Aussie dollar or Aussie Canadian is a, is a, you know, is a, is a good idea, um, or a good, you know, potential. The, the U.S. dollar Mexican peso, I mean, we're, we're, we're right at 20, which is a key resistance, you know, with the, with the, uh, Mexican elections and, you know, the, the lack of, uh, of, of, of NAFTA deal, you know, maybe the U.S. dollar Mexican peso starts to make its way back up towards, 21 maybe even 2150 uh so that and and if you think about what this looks like you know i'm, I'm just giving you a little bit of longer term view here you know you're talking like a garley pattern that could take us back up towards 121 um you know as far as the uh, uh peso goes we could we could really stretch our legs up here so um and, and those are just some ideas and things that that, that I'm looking at uh, in particular, but I am long the euro. Uh, it is counter trend, and I'm I'm I think the a lot of the dollar move is already played out right now. So to, to and and if you look at the euro again, we we're only we're only 16 pips away from from highs. So if we hit new highs, which is 117.75, that's really you know what I'm looking at right here is is this previous support should act as current resistance, but if we get above 1775 and then 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 you're going to get a little bit of a squeeze and that might take us back up towards 119, 120 even you know back up towards the 200 day moving average. But uh, but I, but I like it. I I think that that's uh those are those are some trades that um that are that are really you know setting up development wise. Okay, uh, and and let's go over and take a look at the dollar index before I, t I turn it over to Steve. Uh, you can see the dollar index has made its way towards this is the the 38 percent retracement, you know, the 38 percent retracement of the entire drop in the dollar. We're right up there. Uh, RSI's remained overbought, divergent, um, and um, continue to you know, flash warning signals for anybody who's long the dollar right now. Uh, and again, I think that the dollar is going to have some tailwinds, but, you know, has ha have we already run our course? I think this would have been a much bigger impact if the dollar was still, you know, if it came into this China negotiations under pressure. If we, you know, came into this China negotiations and we were down here, what had happened over the weekend would put us, you know, where we're at now, but because we're already up here, you know, what do you do with, what do you do with the dollar at this point? You know, it's, it's, it's a little bit uh, trickier of a, of a, of a trade in, in my opinion. So um, let's see what else, uh, what else is really out there that, that, that we should be paying attention to that are, you know, dollar denominated uh, moves. Oh, um, 
I, I did short the US dollar Swedish krona this morning and I actually took, I already scalped out of it. Um, I, I shorted it through here, you know, this little thing. But notice how the euro hit. Uh, I'm going to show you actually a different different view here. Whoops, here's the US dollar Swedish krona. Okay. And I'm going to take you over to a chart that doesn't have anything on it. So here's, here's the euro dollar, or uh, excuse me, US dollar Swedish krona, right? Let's clear that out. Now let's take a look at, let's compare that to the euro US dollar. Okay. And, you know, we can even go to a four hour, which would be a little bit better. Okay. So notice how the euro has just been getting pounded, right? And we're, we're obviously the euro looks like it's going to bounce. The euro hit new lows. The US dollar Swedish krona did not hit new highs. So, if the euro dollar, let's say I'm right, and let's say the euro dollar bounces, you know, back up towards uh, 118, 119, this US dollar Swedish krona is going to get, you know, slammed pretty good. Let, let me say for the record that I hate you because that's exactly what I was opening with. I, oh, oh. <laughs> I, I, hey, I, I, I sorted use this sec like an hour ago, and I was I wanted to show exactly what you're showing that. Uh, SEC is overperforming the euro and it yeah. has hit the 61.8 and uh, previous resistance and that I think it's a better short than euro is along. You, it's, it's like it's like you you were in, in my mind, honestly. Well, you know, I was uh, actually um, in, in your office listening just a little while ago. <laughs> I wasn't. I was just thinking, so you you have oh. to, to have taken the next step, which is <laughs> my telekinesis. <laughs> well, Steve, the, Vulcan, the, the Vulcan mind meld. All of us have that talent here. <laughs> we do. We do. <laughs> anyway, well, uh, well, good, Steve. Well, at least we're on the same page, and I think that uh, that that makes sense to to to, to me uh, what we're seeing there, and and I'll I'll let you elaborate on it. Uh, I'll let you elaborate on it um, to the to the viewers, but uh, happy Monday to you. Happy Monday, mate. Yeah, it's. Um, I, I know uh, that you, know, you have family. You're, you're, family you're going out of town because you're going to Cyprus, right? Oh yes, yes. When are you we, When are you going to Cyprus? We're going to Cyprus with Stelios tomorrow uh, for the IFX Expo. For those that don't know, um, and we're going to be back uh, Thursday night. So, so for those of you guys that don't know, I'll be probably spending some extra time with you tomorrow and Wednesday on the daily webinar, uh, as uh, as Steve and Stelios will be traveling. So we are going to bring in, um, hopefully, Andre and Grega. Uh, to, yeah, to Greg, uh, Grega is definitely going to come one of those days, uh, one of those three days, and I think uh, Andre can probably uh, make it so that he can come the other. But I have another suggestion, Coach. Why don't you finally bring Amanda to fill in the other day? What do you say about that? Ready, I think, I, actually, I think, I think Amanda just just left. Left, the yeah. She, just, <laughs> she might have gone to Africa. Out of out of she's out of town now. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, Steve, be careful. All the guys going to Cyprus. Uh, for this expo or on a bail-in list, you know, <laughs> bail in, so you're on the list, man. Empty your oh, account. Yeah. All right. I know. Actually, uh, yeah, I, I know very well. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut out. Uh, Steve, have a, have a great Monday, Dale. Have a great Monday, and everybody else Thank listening in. Uh, have a great trading week. I'll see you. I'll see you here tomorrow. Okay, bro. Okay. Thanks. Guys. Two and a half days with uh, with Steve in Cyprus. I'm really. Oh, Stelios, I feel bad for you. Happy <laughs> Monday. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hey, are you guys going to wear your speedos into the convention? You know it. Um, <laughs> actually, actually there's something. At, at least, at least we're going to have a swimming pool there. At the so, pool, uh, right? At the pool at so, the hotel. So for sure we're going to do some swimming but no i doubt it that we're going to go to the afx expo with our speedos on okay well at the pool you could have a forex analytics sign up by you guys wearing your speedos <laughs> might get a lot of leads <laughs> from from you know what kind of guys we All do right. we, we do man. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. So what are you thinking here, buddy? Okay. Let me show uh, exactly what add symbol. Let's add here. Well, Blake here. already talked about everything you're going to say now. Yeah. Here's the divergence Blake was talking about. You can see it. This is overlapping with um, this is overlapping USD sec with um, USD euro. So you know uh, the inverted of euro USD. So we can see the same direction, and you can clearly see here that in case that we get a pullback for the uh, US dollar, obviously sec is a better vehicle for that, right? I mean. We almost tagged the 61.8, which was previous resistance here. If I zoom out, this is a four-hour chart. You can also see that this was a previous level of support resistance. So clearly, clearly, I think that the USD second, the long term, in the short term, is uh, is a better place. You can also see the other side divergence here. So I think it's the better place to be being short. That's why I also shorted it a while ago. <laughs> Actually, we didn't talk about it with Blake at all. But as you see, Dale sometimes, uh, you know. Uh, we we think alike. He was saying that before. I mean, you know, we saw the same thing in the market. Um, so, you know, I, I'm in total agreement with that. So uh, I definitely agree with that. Now, on the other hand, you already mentioned um, that Amanda had an idea about Euro Aussie. Um, I'm not sure if I would want to be long Euro Aussie. I was short, if you remember from last week, Euro Aussie when we actually broke uh, below this uh, support level. I said it actually in the webinar because I did that uh, just before the webinar. And I do have to say that if you zoom out, you can see that Eurozi is actually hitting a support area. So, yeah, in the short term, you can see it as a descending wedge. Um, we, we've also now hit some, some decent area of support. I haven't taken profits yet. I will first wait to see how the day is going to progress, but I might do so because I'm already like 145 pips in the money. So why not? I mean, I don't want to have uh, much going on uh, while I'm... Uh, um, I'm away, so I might do that. Now, um, if we go to a four-hour chart, I can also show you two things. One is, um, I showed that last week, actually. This is a descending wedge from Kiwi Yen. We definitely see a break to the upside from here. But two, I think Blake uh, showed it, but I didn't hear because I was on a call if he mentioned the potential. Uh, I also see in the Aussie uh, USD a potential inverted head and shoulders formation, you can see it here, right? So I would be watching this in case we do break higher, okay? Um, now, let's see what Blake hasn't mentioned. Okay, um, let me also say that having to do with USD Yen, uh, USD yen is now hitting this uh, horizontal support resistance area that we had marked. We said that 61.8 was the next area of resistance. If we actually broke above this triangle, we tagged that, and now we're pushing this resistance just uh, above it. We have this descending trend line resistance. You can see it here marked in blue. So, as I was saying uh, on Friday, I do think that USD yen has already made the in quotes, easy rebound higher, and I would foresee some type of, of a pullback uh, sooner th rather than later. On the other hand, we have to admit here that as long as it's holding this ascending channel, um, you know, you have to uh, remain cautious being short. I mean, uh, definitely you have to respect it. Uh, only once we see a rejection and the break below this channel, we can be looking for a deeper move lower and seeing what kind of a nature, nature that move will have to determine if it's corrective or impulsive. So we can then, uh, you know, tell for sure uh, w where USD yen is headed in the medium term. Now, having to do with risk, if you remember, I made it quite clear that uh, I have a slight bullish bias as, as long as S&P remains above this uh, descending trend line. And in all honesty, if you see the short-term structure, it to me it looks more or less, you know, a consolidation. Uh, so I wouldn't be really surprised if if we resume to the upside. Uh, it looks quite a likely scenario to me, and I'm actually looking to get involved being long, um, but but I'm not long yet, and you know I'll I'll have to see what you know what my entry, how I'm gonna uh, how I'm gonna plan this trade because I still don't have something solid. I want to see how the day is gonna go, and you know I'll take it from there. 
but I, I am interested to, to to gain some long exposure again because I think um, that if um, if this is the end of a triangle, if if that was indeed the end of a correction, we might uh, finally see a stronger move to the upside. Obviously, you know you can't have 100% confirmation, but I think that the reward to risk ratio is more or less appealing. Now, having to do with indices, the only other thing I want to um, I want to note here is that uh, the FTSE uh, keep, keeps uh, pushing higher. As you see, we've already uh, um, uh, posted um, a, a fresh high. Um, next area of resistance is the 127.2 at 8,045. I doubt we're going to make it there before actually correcting lower. Uh, let's see how the day is going to move today because, as you see, uh, we're already uh, off the highs. Um, we might get some nice signal. I would be looking for a pullback to uh, unfold quite soon, but I do think having seen this uh, V-shape recovery, that pullbacks towards the 7,600 area or at worst case scenario towards the 7,450 area should find uh, buyers. I think that uh, FTSE is clearly constructive. Uh, obviously, uh, a pullback in the US dollar that uh, might finally bring uh, some type of a relief rally for the cable uh, can help um uh in 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 figuring you know such a correction lower um now uh one more uh it's it's uh, the nikkei why simply because we were looking at this 23000 area as a possible area of resistance we finally hit that i would want to see if this creates some some type of a pullback if it does i think we can easily pull back towards the 22000 area uh that is going to be more or less a triple confluence of uh, supports. The 50 DMA is already there. This is a horizontal support resistance area. The 200 DMA is also converging there. It should be within a few days. The 200 DMA should also be there. Um, so I do think that the rejection from here can bring the index back to 22,000. Uh, it's very likely that it's going to find fresh buying uh, interest uh, down there. Um, but let's take it one, one thing at a time. We need to first see a rejection. If that happens, uh, obviously, it, it should coincide with some type of a pullback for uh, the, the use of the yen. Okay, so I do think that uh, you know all of those should be uh, seeing some type of a uh, you know a reversal pullbacks. Um, you know, probably even within uh, this uh, trading week. Um, of course, as always, you know confirmation is important. I mean, that's what my intuition tells me, but. Uh, you know, uh, always getting confirmation first pays pays out. I mean, you lose you lose some of the uh, pr potential profit, but you know you, you are more certain that you, you've picked the right uh, direction if you want to fade this. Now, um, having to do with crude, um, uh, probably people have noticed that crude is consolidating. Uh, it has been uh, it has spent days consolidating and never managing actually to close above this area that we had marked as a target, the 7190 area. If actually we go down to the four hour chart, you're gonna see that crude also has the potential of this being an ascending wedge. Um, it's not slam dunk, but I'm monitoring this as a potential, a potential ascending wedge as well. For me, it's not only gonna be important breaking below it, but also actually accelerating. Now, if that proves to be the case, uh, you can also clearly see here some prolonged RSI divergence in the four-hour chart. Here it is. I mean, RSI here is diverging since uh, actually it's like two weeks now that it's been diverging, which is quite a long period if you consider that this is a four-hour chart. Um, so let's see. I mean, uh, I, I would want to see a reversal from here, but I don't have uh, the evidence yet to support that. It is, an, it is a great area, a great level, possibly a great technical setup. Uh, confirmation is needed here as well, as I said. Um, now, uh, having to do with metals, because I know that our friends uh, you know, constantly are asking for them, uh, I have to say that nothing has changed with silver. You can see that it, it's still holding within uh, this prolonged consolidation. And on the other hand, gold is still trading uh, below this uh, formation. It's now penetrating to, through the 61.8. Of course, that doesn't turn it bearish immediately because, as you see, it's also within a bigger consolidation, but definitely in the short term has. This has been registered as a bearish development. So between the two of them, obviously, gold is 
uh, weaker at the moment. We are also seeing, I, I saw that last week, the potential for a longer term uh, reversal in a prolonged uptrend in the gold-silver ratio, but it's too early. We don't have a technical break yet. Um, so, you know, nothing more to uh, add here. Same thing uh, if you look at um, palladium, it's it's trading water actually. It's trading water actually here, as you see, it's a triangle or whatever it is. So nothing much to see here. And same deal with copper. Copper, copper still remains within this consolidation. I would want to see, I mean, I, I'm still a believer that it, it should be resolved to the upside. I mean, it has a higher p potential of being resolved to the upside. But a confirmation is something that is needed. And for me to get that, I would want to see a break above 317. Uh, and we're still some distance from that. Um, now, um, Blake already showed uh, cable. I do think that we should see some type of a rebound uh, for cable as well. But obviously, it, it's been uh, weaker than Euro, it's been, it has been uh, weaker than uh, SEC, NOC, etc. So um, I, I, I would want to be short at a decent rebound, and I wouldn't want to be trading that rebound. Because if you want to trade the rebound, as I said, there are stronger currencies to do it. If, on the other hand, you want to align yourself um, with uh, the previous trend, which means uh, shorting, I think that a rebound for cable towards the 137, 137.50 area, if we even make it to that, uh, is going to be a great opportunity. Um, let me see what kind of questions we have and get some inspiration. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Um, now that I remembered, use the Swiss. Here it is. Use the Swiss, as you see, is holding uh, quite nicely. And um, in all honesty, this looks to me like a pennant uh, for the time being. Okay, so um, I was thinking that we, we will get rejected from there and we will perhaps make it down to uh, 98.50. Might be the case still, but so far, I'm just seeing a pennant here. So I would be quite careful with it. Uh... Beware of the expo. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, Cad Swiss. Let's have a look at it. We haven't had a look at it in some time for sure. So let's see. Okay. Here's Cad Swiss. You can see that Cad Swiss has been trading within a long term formation. Um, we came quite close to the resistance, but we, we didn't make it there. Obviously, longer term, there is no direction since a long time ago, right? Eventually, I think that um, this has a high chance of getting resolved in the direction of the trend lower. Um, an intermediate level, I would be looking for support. If we actually keep pushing lower from here, would be at 76.20. But I would, in all honesty, I wouldn't be doing much with it at the moment, right? You can see why. Could you please check FTSE? Yeah, we did that. DAX, sure. USD Turkish Lira. Okay, um, let me begin by USD Turkish Lira in case people haven't seen it. The USD Turkish Lira has gone once again parabolic. Okay, I, I said it many times. This is to be expected. Uh, Turkey has huge issues, and the Turkish Lira will remain under pressure until. Uh, the geopolitical situation and the political situation in Turkey gets normalized. I think that there is a good chance that it's going to move quite a lot higher from here. So in all honesty, I've said it plenty of times and since months ago when people are asking, I would not be trying to uh, uh, time a reversal here. It's extremely dangerous, extremely dangerous. You can see why. Okay. I mean, we keep breaking all levels to the upside and we keep going parabolic at some point of course something might happen some 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 type of a new some type of news might come out and we might see like a big snapback but still i would still be looking to the upside 
I don't think that the structural issues um, that Turkey has can be resolved overnight. Uh, ah, you also asked about the DAX, so let's have a look at it. Here it is. Here's the DAX. It's approaching the 78.6. It makes sense to see some type of a um, um, some type of a move higher after actually breaking and retesting this uh, horizontal area of support resistance. We had said how important it is, but still, I would be expecting sooner rather than later to see some type of a pullback um, for the DAX. So the 78. 0.6 might do that, in which case, obviously, from this point on, the, the first area of support is the 12,900. Okay, you can see, if I zoom out, you can see how important it has been. It has acted multiple times as support and resistance. It acted as support here. It acted as resistance here and here. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's quite a likely scenario that it's going to be acting as support once again uh, when it is tested. Bottom line, you know, I would remain constructive. You can see why we held this ascending uh, trend line. I would remain constructive, but I would not be buying, you know, before we see a pullback. So not the reward to risk opportunity to buy here, but pullbacks, uh, you know, are probably a good idea to be buying them. Uh, what about the Nasdaq? Let's have a look at the Nasdaq. Here is the Nasdaq. So. Um, we, we've seen several likely scenarios with NASDAQ. One of them is a scenario of, a, of an ascending wedge, right? In which case, we might even see a new all-time high before seeing some type of a pullback or, you know, something more complex, perhaps, something like this. Before eventually seeing a failure and, and a bigger pullback. So this is quite a likely scenario for the NASDAQ. In all honesty, and if you see even in the short term, just look at this. We moved higher, we came down, we retested this high as support, so far it's holding. Okay, so I mean, I, I would remain co cautiously constructive. And I say cautiously because, you know, I can't ignore this move lower, which looked initially impulsive, uh, same with the S&P. Greg actually still believes that the more likely scenario is that we're going to see one more move to the downside before actually moving higher. Um, that that's his main case scenario because he has an alternative case scenario that you know the corrections are already over. For me, it's the opposite. I mean, my main case scenario is that probably the corrective move lo uh, moves lower are done. And, you know, I think that the chances that we have one more move to the downside has a little bit less of a chance to playing out. Definitely not unlikely. I mean, it's still quite a high uh, possibility. That's why I, I kept advocating last week that we need to get more confirmation here because, you know, the price action, in especially in risk assets, is not conclusive yet. And this is something I, I need to stress out. So... Keep in mind that, you know, you need to exercise careful uh, risk management in case you want to be short or long, uh, because, you know, it, sometimes you, you do something and you have a high conviction. In this case, I can't say that I have high conviction, but I do think that if my main case scenario plays out, the reward to risk opportunity is quite appealing. OK, so I cannot ignore that. Would there be a change in your view on the Nifty yet? Let's have a look at the Nifty. Dale, who do we have in for an interview, uh, by the way? We have a crypto genius who's currently in the house, Michael Unitic. I hope I'm pronouncing your last name correctly, Michael. So from Chicago at Chicago Mike is his okay. handle. There's something you at Chicago Mike you so Mike University looking forward to talking to you in about 10 minutes after Steve is done okay perfect nice so obviously the uh, the topic of conversation is going to be cryptos right yeah yes okay okay, okay nice um, so um, now having to do with uh, the nifty so first of all let's draw some some fresh fibs here 
we got a nice signal that we're going to see a correction when we got that key reversal shooting star up there. First area of support, as I said, was 10,600. If we break below it, I said that we should be looking towards the 10,450, roughly. We've broken, we've definitely broken below it. Now, two cases I see here, and it's the same thing exactly I was talking about having to do with the rest of the indices. Scenario uh, one, this was a fresh move to the upside, with, in which case we should find support. Uh, worst case scenario would say at the 200 DMA here and the 61.8, this confluence here, and keep moving to the upside. Uh, in which case, you know, we had a, a correction and it's done. Scenario two, let me start drawing them actually. So scenario one, uh, we find some support, we move higher. Scenario two, this will prove to be some, some type of a triangle as well. So that means more choppy consolidation, but that's also a, a scenario that has a bullish interpretation. So if you start seeing the index escalate between um, you know, previous high and previous low again and, and again. Uh, that's probably a triangle and eventually it should be resolved to the upside. Now, third type of scenario, this was an A, this is going to be a B, and we might have one more move to the downside to actually meet the target I was looking for when we were initially pushing lower at 9,700 before moving higher. Um, so I do, I would still be constructive, I would still remain constructive for the Nifty. I think that there are very high chances that it's going to find support uh, at any point above uh, 10,300. Uh, but there are also the other two scenarios you have to consider. And as I said, there are times that price action gives you the ability to be quite confident of what's happening. And there are cases as this one with uh, risk and uh, you know, uh, stock indices that you know, conviction has to be lower because we definitely saw some type of a, uh, some type of a cor correction beginning um, you know, um, at, at, at uh, the beginning of this year. And you know, with corrections, one, one thing is always the problem that you can almost never be certain of what kind of form, what kind of a structure they're gonna have in advance. It's much easier um, extrapolating impulsive moves one, once they've begun, but with corrective moves, it's a much trickier game to play. Okay. Regardless, uh, I would remain constructive um, that eventually, I mean, we're going to push to new highs uh, one way or another. Uh, you're asking about the RSI. Okay. Uh, so far, the RSI doesn't tell us anything. I mean, the RSI so far has been definitely, we had a, a divergence there. You can see this. But so far, the RSI, I mean, doesn't show something much. The fact that pre the previous time RSI found support uh, at above the 30 level is a good sign. Um, obviously, you would want to see, if you want to be bullish, you would want to see the same thing again here. A FTSE, I already covered, for our friend that's asking about the FTSE, I already covered, you can see the recording, I can very briefly tell you that, uh, you know, at some point quite soon, I believe that some type of a pullback is going to evolve, uh, in which case, uh, that might also coincide with, with uh, pound rebounding, in which case, I would definitely be looking to buy that, because, uh, you know, this move to the upside is uh, one way or another, uh, impulsive, and I do think that FTSE is one of the best-looking indices um, at the moment. So, you know, if if I if I was looking to buy uh, one pullback in one index, prob index probably that would be the, for the FTSE. Um, okay, euro yen and pound yen. Let's have a look at them. Euro yen quite mixed as you see, still rebounding, still trapped between this 129 area and the 131.50 area. Uh, so in all honesty, not, not very much to do here. Um, I would still think that there is a very high chance that eventually this is going to be resolved to the downside uh, with a break below 129. Uh, but you know, in the short term, it, it might keep consolidating. Now, having to do with the pound yen, I already said that I'm very, very actively looking to sell pound yen once we get a confirmed break 
below this blue trend line. Okay. So far, we're seeing a rebound from this exact trend line, but in all honesty, this rebound is definitely uh, not um, as strong. I mean, there is no real upside momentum. I think that it looks like a move to the upside that's, that's more or less bound to fail. Uh, we're also testing here the 50 and the 200 DMA. I would really want to see it roll over and uh, push lower, but I don't have a position yet. I'm looking to have one, but I don't. Can you check use the yen reaching upper channel? Uh, yeah, I already talked about the use the yen. It's it's reaching multiple types of resistance. I think anywhere between 111.50 and 112.20, uh, it can fail. And I really want to see what kind of a move lower we're going to get to determine uh, if I'm actually interested to look to be looking higher in the the medium to long term or lower. So far, I've abstained from uh, having positions on USD yen since a long time ago, and I really, really don't regret it. Okay. Any other questions? Or otherwise, we can pass it to Dale. And Dale, if you're ready, you can start three minutes ahead. I usually steal a little bit of your time. In this case, <laughs> you can go uh, ahead and steal Deal one more minute. Absolutely. Maybe, uh, maybe talk about uh, some of the new plans we have for our company. I'll be right back. Uh, which, which of all? There are too many. <laughs> well, uh, the most important one. Okay. Um, okay. We oh, we've all already said multiple times that we're going to be releasing our new platform. Um, you know that's going to happen rather soon. I mean, we we want we want it to be perfect. So. Uh, we, uh, you know, we, we, we're working on some little details, uh, so I can't give you an exact timing. It should be within a couple of weeks maximum, but this is a good opportunity to remind everybody that on our website, if you go to our investment program, you can uh, come in contact here using either the Skype um, uh, contact or the uh, email with Forest Park FX. Uh, especially if you're a Forex Analytics uh, member, you can also uh, get this way a discount on your subscription, uh, or you, it, you can even, depending on your trading volume, you, you can even have it for free. And regardless, you can definitely ha find help from these guys in determining what is the best solution for you, what is the best broker, so you can minimize the commissions, um, rollovers, etc., that you pay. Uh, depends on depending on your trading style. Okay, so I, I, I honestly suggest you do that. You have absolutely nothing um, to lose. Look at that trophy, though. Where'd, where'd you get that trophy? That was up on the other page. <laughs> this one, oh, you mean, eh? it's, the FX, it's the FX3 award, yes. Oh, hold on, let me get my magnifying glass. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me have a let me have a look at the USD ZAR as well because we have a friend asking, and then I can pass okay. it to you. Okay, USD ZAR still looks good as long as it's holding above this area. Um, so the next upside target is the 50% fib at 13. Regardless, I would have to um, uh, you know um, reiterate once again that I do think that this rebound is corrective in nature. So I would be quite careful with uh, being long. Okay, if if there was a place to be long, it was when we indicated that it, that there was either a triangle or an inverted head and shoulders playing out here, and we got a breakout. Uh, now that we've already moved some way, I think that uh, I I, w I would probably not be entering the market uh, right here right now. Okay, thank you, Dale. Enjoy the interview, my friend. Thank you, bro. Hello, and Michael. by the way, Neil, you yeah. still owe me. You still owe me an Amanda show, right? I owe you what? A, oh yeah, so yes. with Amanda. Yeah. Uh, anytime she's ready, I'll I'll uh, I'll interrupt anything. It'll be like a uh, you know news alert on TV where they interrupt everything. I would do that for her. Okay. Absolutely. All okay. right. So here's Michael. Michael, great to meet you. Thank you for showing up to address our community here in face and you're the leadoff man for the face interview lineup and the chicago cubs 
Mike Unitech. All right. Thank you, Dale. Uh, hey, Mike. Nice to hear you. I can hear you. Uh, do you see a prompt for a screen share? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. Okay. I have your face. How about your screen? Right. We don't want that. Uh, the face is good. You're uh -huh. at the office in downtown Chicago. You know, I was right. yep. brought up uh, in Skokie. Uh, very nice. Yeah. So, okay. There's your screen, Michael. Very, uh, very yeah. nice. To, yeah. Nice to meet you, buddy. I appreciate you coming in here today. Um, usually I, I'm able to, uh, you know, I went to your specific link. Uh, the company that you're with again? That trading you're representing? Technologies. Yeah, Trading okay. Technologies. And we, uh, we are based in Chicago. Okay, so maybe uh, there was a bio there about you. Uh, I'm always interested in, you know, how's a nice guy from Chicago end up getting hooked on gambling and uh, and speculating yeah. in in the markets. I mean, it's kind of a natural if you grow up there. You probably knew guys that were at the exchange when you were younger. And how did it happen for you, Michael? Uh, so I discovered uh, the exchanges when I was still in college. I first started just dabbling in some uh, equity options. I uh, kind of became aware of that world just by having a part-time job in a brokerage office. So I ended up uh, seeking and finding a job uh, on the floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. That was in the mid-90s. I worked for a guy at that time that nobody knew named Don Wilson. Um, DRW, uh, his firm, is now one of the larger uh, proprietary trading firms in the world. I was there for eight years before going off to trade on my own. Um, I was a market maker in the pits, uh, including pit? the tenure, the tenure note options, a okay. short stint at a short stint at the CBOE and the equity options, and then uh, also in the euro dollar back month futures pit. So I've traded a little bit of everything. Uh, in 2005, that market started to transition. The volume started to transition to the screen. Um, so yeah. with my little group, we took that move to the screen pretty seriously. Uh, so we started developing some market making programs and we're doing some pretty decent volume up until about 2009. In 2009, we changed our firm into a software company because we figured we have a pretty nice system here that could compete with the likes of trading technologies. Uh, so we did that business and then a year and a half later, uh, we did a little deal with TT and I ended up there for uh, 18 months. So that was the first time I went from transitioning from trader to the service side. I did that again in 2015. Uh, I was trading uh, interest rate futures. Um, in the beginning of 2017, that market became so, so dull that I discovered the cryptocurrencies, uh, picked up more than a passing interest there. But the frustration I was having was that every time I'd open up an account on a new exchange, I'd see an equally challenging user interface with which to trade. Now, fortunately, I still had friends. Uh, I still have friends at Trading Technologies. So I told them, why don't I bring over a laptop? I'll give you a little demo of trying to enter some orders on a couple of these platforms. And after that, hopefully you're, you'll agree with me that TT should go into the business of connecting to this new asset class of a cryptocurrency exchange. So just to be clear on that, Trading Technologies is, um, we're nothing more than a, a front end system that connects to exchanges. We connect to okay. uh, over 40 futures exchanges around the world, uh, a couple cash bond exchanges, and we now connect to one cryptocurrency exchange. Which so one? We're not yet in the FX world, but um, this is probably the most logical step um, that could eventually lead to that is connecting to um, Coinbase's GDAX exchange. Okay, so that's the one crypto exchange that you are connected to. They're the yes. biggest volume-wise, Mike? Uh, they're the biggest in the U.S. Um, I think they trade the, maybe the most uh, Bitcoin in U.S. dollar terms. Okay. How about security of funds? Do you keep your balances low there? I mean, there, none of these are, are they regulated by not the NFA by anybody, this exchange? Uh, well, I, what I would say about Coinbase and GDAX is that um, I think they're going 
through the final steps of regulation. Um, they are, I would say, the most trusted brand in crypto. That's one reason that we ended up um, doing a deal and connecting with them first. Uh, they keep 98% of a customer's crypto assets offline, meaning uh, um, not accessible via any internet connection. Uh, the remaining couple of percent, they carry insurance on that. Uh, additionally, anyone with a U.S. dollar balance, I think they have the um, – is FDIC 250K these days? So you have FDIC coverage on any cash balances. So uh, I tell our institutional customers it's probably one of the few exchanges – where as if I was a big fund, I would feel comfortable dropping, uh, putting $50 million uh, on Coinbase and being able to sleep at night feeling that it's com totally and completely secure. Uh, so oh, because well, of that- a, That's a big statement. Yeah, and, and I, have, uh, I, don't, I don't have a big account, but I'm um, perfectly happy keeping my crypto funds and assets on um, Coinbase. Uh, and the GDAX exchange uh, as well. So I kind of put my money where my mouth is, I'd say. Do you also, uh, you know, like carrying around cash in your pocket? Do you have a crypto wallet? I do. Um, I'm The amount that I have on other exchanges is small enough that I don't feel like I need to um, pull it off the exchange. Um, by keeping it in a wallet, um, you are introducing the 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 lat um you're reducing your speed at which you'd be able to transact so i have sort of have the mindset of a trader so okay. i want to if i see something and I, or i wake up in the morning and i want to do a trade i don't want to have to go through the process of uploading a crypto asset off of a wallet onto an exchange um, but i think it's a perfectly good method for people that trust themselves to keep um a secure to keep a password secure and they have the mindset of just wanting to uh, buy and hold an investment. Okay, so this market is 24-7. Uh, when do you rest? Uh, it is 24-7, and that comes out to about 8,700 trading hours in a year versus the equity market, which is something like 1,600. Because you're not as young as you used to be, Mike. I've heard yeah. your story, okay, so, you know, That's right. not 1995 anymore, buddy, where you could go to happy hour and stay out till 10 o'clock and then make the opening. So, uh, you know, isn't that a kind of a, a drain on your energy? So you have to pay attention. Do you get flat for a day or so to recharge your battery? Uh, no, it, it, it is something that you can, it is a, you, you can look at your, your portfolio prices and positions 24 seven, that is true. Uh, there used to be an old watering hole over near the Chicago Board of Trade. Their slogan was don't drink and trade. So you might yeah. be able to check it 24 seven, but I wouldn't recommend trading it 24 seven. Well, is that the uh, sign, of, uh, sign of the trader? Yes, uh, personally, okay. I'm, uh, I don't get flat. I'm comfortable just holding positions. Okay, you ever put a trade on in, in church on Sunday? And hope <laughs> that it's a, you have God's blessing for it to work out for you? That's a pretty good idea. I might have to try it. <laughs> I've tried everything, Mike, even a magnet on my screen. So uh, why don't we get to the markets here and uh, maybe you have some views, uh, you know, price discovery. We've had some huge moves in Bitcoin. I've noticed lately that um, Ethereum seems to be uh, have a better technical structure than Bitcoin. And is there some rotation going on now? Uh, what are your views on the asset class here, and uh, are there any trades that look compelling to you? Uh, my view of, of, of cryptocurrencies as an asset class is that um, it does have a lot of potential. Um, it is a, a borderless, um, permissionless, uh, censorship-resistant asset class where somebody can transact uh, across borders freely 24-7. Uh, uh, I think a, a lot of us in the U.S., um, we don't know what it's like. We don't know the feeling what it's like to sleep at night, um, not trusting that when you wake up in the morning, um, your your home currency yeah. and your wealth is secure. So I'd say for people in most countries of the world, crypto offers a unique uh, diversification or a store of value um, that they would actually view as far safer than the currency that that they are, um, that their home country is. So that is certainly one of the values. Okay, um, so, uh, but don't you think it makes a difference? Uh, 
or maybe it doesn't in those situations own at any price because you know there have been some pretty good fluctuations from where it was to eighteen thousand to six back to nine um is price discovery and when is a good time to own it or is it always a good time to own it uh I think like a trader, so when it goes up too much, too far, too fast, uh, I usually scale out along the way, um, which for me would mean I take a little bit of chips off the table, but I also look to redeploy um, some, uh, in, some into other crypto assets that on a relative basis maybe haven't had a similar type of move. So um, I take Do you have some favorites? Analysis. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you have some favorites that aren't kind of like in FX we would call certain pairs of majors, kind of like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, uh, maybe even Ripple? Uh, what other uh, coins or crypto do you have on your screen? Maybe I could see here. I see mainly Bitcoin. Are there any others that you feel comfortable with trading besides the majors? Uh, so... Coinbase's GDAX exchange has the has the the big four, and they have the different currency crosses there. Um, I think all four of those I would consider the majors. Okay. Um, over time, our, our company will be connecting to more than just one exchange. Um, so other exchanges, you can you can find some of these alternative coins. Um, exchanges like Bitrex is a U.S. based exchange that does a pretty nice job. Um, there's another one named Kraken that's based in the U.S., K-R-A-K-E-N. They're based in the U.S. They offer a fair amount of uh, alternative coins. They're in San uh, Francisco, right? Up in the Bay correct. Area. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I tried to get a you know call or a forecast out of you, so I, I could tell I'm, I'm not going to, except I will uh, say uh, what happens first, 18,000 Bitcoin again, or do we take out the 6,000 low? I think it's poised to go higher from here. I think it's survived um, a lot of shelling so far this year. Okay. Um, I think that slowly it's being recognized um, as a little as, as a true asset class, and I think institutions are taking the steps needed um, so that they can offer cryptocurrencies as an investable asset, their asset class. So I do think it's poised to go higher. So, so I'll okay. take 18. Okay, and. Uh, uh, let me ask you this, as far as uh, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum is concerned, um, is there a, a way that you feel, do you use stop losses when you're trading as a trader and what's say the average risk on a crypto trade for you? Uh, I do use stop losses um, it, on more of what I guess I would consider the fast money part of my portfolio. So. I do have core holdings where um, I, I don't use stop losses. I'm happy to um, have a certain amount of uh, uh, assets and wealth diversified into crypto. Uh, I'd say on on stop losses, um, an, an average daily move can be anywhere between two and four uh, percent. I like to do uh, around a ten percent stop loss. So in something like ETH that's priced around seven hundred. And like you mentioned, uh, has a chart that, that looks pretty decent right now. Um, okay. Something like a $70 fall from here would be where I'd probably want to go out, get out and um, reconsider if it's going to go back up into the high 300s that it was a couple of months ago. Okay, so uh, why don't we talk about the platform that Trading Technologies and you have put together? I, I think you want to talk about the advantages of trading crypto on this platform? front-end platform? Sure. So um, for anyone that's experienced trading directly on crypto um, websites previously, um, you'll see that all the things that you want to do are not doable all on one screen. So we tried to solve that pain point um, by getting everything that you'd want to see on one laptop screen. So on this screen up here, starting in my upper left, we have what's called a market grid. And by the way, uh, all these little windows or, or what we call widgets, um, you can um, pull out of a menu here and completely resize them and make a completely bespoke workspace. So um, this market grid window, you can 
click in here and, and pick a um, pick a currency asset uh, in the contract column. Uh, this gives you market prices, uh, bid quantity, ask quantity. You notice in the bid quantity here we have uh, these plus signs that are showing uh, the market quantity. Uh, what what we've done there is we've allowed the user to determine how many decimals they want to display. So I'm displaying two. Uh, crypto is naturally uh, quantities are uh, eight decimal places in most cases. Uh, we kind of okay. consider that a lot of noise, so we made that configurable by the user. If it is truncating quantity, it, it displays a plus sign. Uh, below that, we have an order book. Below that, we have uh, fills. Um, next to that, we have a time and sales window that the user can configure to show. Uh, this one's configured to show a minimum quantity of 10. Uh, it has highlights at 50 and over. Uh, red indicates that the market aggressor was a seller. Blue indicates they were a buyer. Uh, the chart up here, uh, I, can, I can pretty easily reconfigure or add things. So let's go in here and add, I'll add another moving average. Okay. I think I have a, Very nice. a five up there right now. We'll, we'll add a 12. Okay. There's a 12, 12 bar moving average. Okay. Um, how about we also add, um, we could change the time intervals so we could change it from five, which it is right now. Uh, we could draw, we could put a line up here. Okay. okay. All right. Quickly add one of those. All right. So, so what's the business model for, uh, P for you guys providing, uh, this platform to retail traders? Uh, do they pay, uh, monthly subscription rate to do it, or you guys participate in a spread, uh, uh, what's it uh, cost for, what are the costs involved in using your platform? Yep, good question. So um, Trading Technologies uh, does have um, the, the legacy platform that we have that also connects to cryptocurrency exchanges and all the futures exchanges. Um, that has a monthly license uh, fee, which I'll get to in a minute. The platform you're looking at, which is crypto only, which like I said, is one exchange now, but um, we will be adding exchanges. It's completely free to the user. Um, so, um, and it, it doesn't change the prices on the screen or anything like that, meaning um, what you see on our screen is the real price feed of the exchange. Um, it, for, for our business model, we're trying to gain market share. Um, we're, we're, we're taking the long-term view that users of this platform may eventually want to trade the futures um, and move over to our other license, which runs um, about $400 a month uh, for, for a basic user. Um, but this one is completely free, including some automated trading tools. Uh, there are advanced order types that uh, I could okay. pull up over in this section. So it's, over like here. A, it's like a door opener for your other platforms. Okay. Yeah, but uh, great, I'd say great strategy. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's still a fully functional um, crypto platform. It's the one that I use. Um, so if someone was, um, if someone just wants to trade crypto, I'd say this is high performance, uh, high high capability, and um, no no cost. Well, Mike, anything you want to wrap it with? Uh, one thing that Trading Technology is known for is uh, single click trading. So I'm just going to go in here and and put a couple orders in the market. Uh, this is the real market here. I can go in there. I can modify it by drag and drop that price um, on this vertical price ladder. With a single click, I can cancel it. With a middle click, I can I can change the quantity. Let's change that up to three lot. Okay, change that order. Now we're going to go ahead and cancel it. Um, this view shows every single tradable price increment. If I wanted to display these in 25 cent consolidated increments, I could do that. There you go. Uh, there's another view over here where my mouse is that is only showing prices where there are orders in the market. So instead of showing every tradable price, we're just showing um, prices where there are orders. And that's that's a little bit more um, what you find in the crypto world. And then um, we want to make it so that you don't even have to go to the exchange's websites. So up here, you have what we call the assets widget. Uh, this account has, it's just displaying has two and a half uh, Bitcoin cash, BCH. 23 ETH, $1,400 cash. 
Uh, so we really try to make it so that you don't have to feel like you need to be checking in on the Exchange websites. Then that'll be even more useful as we add more exchanges because you don't want to have to have 15 tabs open of 15 different websites. So, um, okay. and we're we're taking user feedback. Um, as as I've, I uh, mentioned, I, I have a viewer question for you. What is the best way to trade inside Coinbase from Bitcoin to Bitcoin Cash? with no wallet or vault in between? That's from Tom Lano. Um, so somebody could um, design an automated spread where they could convert out of their Bitcoin and into their Bitcoin cash at a differential that they choose. So I actually have, um, I have that as a, I'm gonna pull up a spread here to show that. Uh, this one would be Bitcoin. This one is Bitcoin to ETH. So let's take a look. Okay, so I have on a one to 10 ratio, if somebody wanted to trade out of one BCH in, into 10 ETH, um, they could enter an order in this market where it would trade the differential where it would be buying BTC, selling ETH. If they entered a sell order, they'd be selling one BTC to buy 10 ETH. So that would be a way that you can roll in and out of uh, different crosses um, without having at, at the differential uh, and the ratio that you specify um, without okay. having to do any wallet transactions or having to take the risk of manually trading it yourself. Man, you guys have thought of everything, Michael. Really a, really a pleasure meeting you. I wish you success that uh, hundreds of thousands of people start using your platform and appreciate you coming in to edify our community about a way to go in crypto. Thank you, buddy. Sure. Yeah, I enjoyed it, Dale. Thanks for giving us the opportunity. All right. Great to meet you, my crypto trading warrior brother. Uh, thank All you. All right, buddy. Take it easy. Okay. All right, everyone. That was Michael. You could follow him at Shy, C H I, Mike U, and, and find him at tradingtech.com, right? Is that correct, Mike? Yes, correct. All right, buddy. All right, so that's it. I'll see everyone for Turnaround Tuesday. Don't just count your pips or your cryptos. Count your blessings and see everyone tomorrow. Good hunting. Bye-bye.